How do you politely tell your significant other to lose weight? Ooh. Well, oof. If you're, go ahead. You got something you want to say about that? Oh, yeah. The scientist has something to say. You can tell your significant other that you have got a gift for the both of you. And you've signed yourselves up for a fun gym membership or yoga classes. Or you guys are going to start kayaking together. Start biking together. Doing things together. And then slowly ease yourself out and do things with either the girls or the boys, whoever doesn't really need it as much, but continue to encourage your significant other and tell them how great of a job that they are doing and how wonderful they look. And it's always about like the small things. So just keep like, keep encouraging them and telling them that they're doing great they're doing great each step of the way um positive reinforcement yeah that's so you you don't tell them how much you love them and you don't want them to die i well you could do that i mean i'm brutally honest i I wouldn't go that far because then sometimes i think people would take that like in a negative way especially if certain people have like yeah. eating disorders that can yeah. trigger certain things. Well, uh, overeating is definitely, that's eating. also an eating yeah. disorder. Mm-hmm. So it could trigger an overeating disorder and they can go in closet eat in the middle of the night when you're not looking. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I know I'm a closet eater and I eat when no one's looking, but that's like, got them Scooby snacks. Yeah. You know, I'm always eating them Scooby you snacks. You can never go wrong with Scooby snacks. I mean, I had a key lime pie for breakfast before, I'm like, I don't no. know how you do it. I cannot do that. And, and then I went and people, I ran for two miles. There's also people who drink soda for breakfast. I'm like, I can't even do that. Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't, like your face says it all. Like I can't no. do that. I, I mean, I, I, I have like ice. I'll make chai tea, but I'll put like ice in it. So I'll do like an iced tea for breakfast. No, yeah. see, so that's back to the original <laughs> question. Also, back to the original question. I got something I want to say here. The reality is a woman who neglects herself Why and neglects her woman? body. Well, I, I'm assuming because most of my audience is dudes, so I'm well, assuming it's a guy. What if her boyfriend? It's a significant fat. other. So, so let me finish the thought before you <laughs> rudely interrupt me. So, as I was saying, a woman who neglects herself and doesn't exercise, doesn't take care of herself. If she neglects herself and her body, eventually she's going to neglect you. And when you look at the numbers, seventy-four percent of Americans are either obese or they're overweight. And you, if, cause a lot, it's interesting. We I had Kwong because Kwong owns a uh, CrossFit gym. Kwong's a Taiwanese guy I've had on a bunch of times. He used to work in the Air Force and psychological warfare. And so he's, it's like he's got it timed to like, you know, he'd see people come in. They just had a breakup that, you know, a lot of times it's the guy or the girl. They come in, they work out real hard, they lose the weight, they get fit, they get in shape. And then oftentimes they would meet somebody in the CrossFit gym that they would start dating. And then six, eight months later, neither one of them are coming in. And then a year later, it's like the guy comes back. He's got a spare tire. He's totally out of shape. Maybe the woman comes back. Maybe she doesn't. But the bottom line is that they work out and take care of themselves to meet somebody. And then when they get into a relationship, they just let themselves go. And if you're both fit and in shape and you come into a relationship and then one or both of you just starts letting yourselves go and neglecting your bodies, it's, you know, if you start out in a relationship with somebody who's fit and in shape and then they just let themselves go and they gain a bunch of weight, it's, you say, baby, I love you, but you're getting kind of big and it's not healthy and it's not good for you. And I'm going to the gym, I'm taking care of myself and you're, I'm going to say that. That's how I am. I'm brutally honest about it it's like i love you i'm concerned for your health but i want a teammate i want an equal i want somebody that's going to work out and take care of themselves not just say oh well i'm in a relationship i don't have to do this anymore because i have a friend of mine who is about my age and she has zero interest in working out or taking care of her body and she can't even squat her own body weight And recently, she took a spill 
because she has no strength in her legs. And I love her to death. We've been friends a long time. but And I've shared all these things with her, and I will continue to share them, but she doesn't care. And it's like the reality is people get into a relationship – or especially as they get older, they just don't give a damn. I had a friend who was a cardiologist and that lived in one of my buildings in Orlando. And we were having this long conversation about this. This is probably seven, eight years ago, I think, at this point. And I said, like, it, you know, because the cardiologist, he's dealing with people that have had heart attacks or strokes or whatever. I said, so, like, what, what age are people, I, you know, when they've had a heart attack, are they willing to, you know, change their diet and start exercising? And like, what age are people just like, screw it, doc? I don't care. Just give me the damn pills. And he says, seventy-five percent of the people that are fifty-five and under, when they've had a heart attack or a major a stroke or whatever, they'll seventy-five percent of them will want to change their diet and will be interested in exercise. And he says, people that are fifty-five and up. 75% of them are like, just give me the pill. They don't care. Whatever it is, 55 seems to be the magic number where most people are just like, they're phoning it in at that point. They don't give a damn. They just want to be comfortable until they croak. It's sad. It's a tragedy of life. It's, I'm being brutally honest here. And my friend, I, would, I, would, I continue to tell her these things, but she don't care. She's not interested in working out or taking care of herself. I'm like, you're going to be in a wheelchair in 10 years. And, you know, when you came and squat your own body weight and now you're falling down in your house and hurting yourself, it's like, it's not nice. I'm getting dirty looks here in the room, but it's like, I don't care. You got to be brutally honest with people because it doesn't serve them to blow sunshine up their asses because they got plenty of people. They're like, oh, you look great. It's fine. Oh, yeah. And they just, they make excuses for it. And that doesn't serve them to blow sunshine up their ass and tell them it's okay you know, me being a life coach, I'm always going to, everybody always knows where they stand with me. I always tell it like it is. And I love people and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to give them the truth, even when it hurts, hurts their feelings, because that's what serves them. And if they still don't give a shit and they want to let themselves go, I'm sad for them, but Hey, I told them how it was. I'm personally not going to be in a relationship with, with somebody that starts out being fit and in shape and who just is going to let themselves go and totally neglect their bodies and balloon up in the house because I don't want to be somebody's nurse. You know, you, you come into a relationship as two happy, whole, complete individuals to share your completeness. Not so you take care of yourself and then you get in a relationship and now you just let yourself go and fall apart and they have to put up with it, which is, quite frankly, all you have to do is look around in our society and what you typically see is that, you know, a couple gets together and then they have kids. She, she'll have two or three kids. She doesn't lose the baby weight, doesn't give a shit. She cuts all her hair off. She stops wearing makeup. She's wearing baggy clothes all the time. He's, he's demotivated. He's not working out. He's not taking care of himself. They're not having sex anymore. And then they both wear the same kind of clothes. They have the shirts that, you know, with the air on with stupid, you know, the, the <laughs> unhappy wife. <laughs> Is, you know, walking in front of the, the kids and the husband is kind of like the caboose. With his, his head is hunched over. His shoulders are rolled forward and he's just beat down by life. And it's like all you got to do is go outside and these couples are everywhere. They're not having sex. They're not having fun. But they're staying in it for the kids. And then what happens? Because I've got friends that were like that. I had friends that got married because he knocked up his high school sweetheart and – you know, both the kids are fat, the wife is fat, he's fat, and they just sit there and they argue and they bicker and they bitch at each other. And, you know, this particular couple, the kids are grown up, and guess what? They're in the same kinds of relationships. The kids are obese. Now they're in relationships with obese people and they're nasty to one another. It's like, I don't want anything to do with that. And unfortunately, I would say the majority of people in our society are like that. They just don't care. And if you're fit and you're in shape, you deserve to be with somebody that will maintain themselves and take care of their bodies. I have these same conversations with family members of mine as well. It's like, it's just people don't give a damn. They don't love themselves enough to take care of themselves. And it doesn't serve anybody to blow the sunshine up their ass. So if you're in a relationship with a girl and she's letting herself go and she's housing on you, you got to tell her. And it's like, 
if she's if you stay fit and in shape and she's just con- content to continue to blow herself up <laughs> and not care it's like well you know she shouldn't be surprised when you eventually leave her and it's harsh but you know you deserve a teammate and an equal and somebody that is going to show up day in and day out not somebody that's oh now I'm married we got 30 year mortgage you ain't going anywhere and they're just going to let themselves go I agree relationship weight can be scary definitely but I literally have friends who tell me, oh, but your boyfriend loves you. I don't see any issue with your weight and stuff. And yeah, see, like, that story I don't justifies like that. Yeah. that. They're going, oh, it's okay. Yeah, I don't, It'll be fine. It's like just because you're in a relationship doesn't mean you shouldn't be taking care of yourself. There's nothing exactly. wrong with whether, looking presentable. Whether you're underweight or overweight. It goes both ways. And from yeah. a guy's perspective, if you always stay fit and in shape, and women are always going to notice you and they're going to compliment you on that. And your wife or your girlfriend is going to notice that other women like the fact that you're fit and in shape. And whether you realize it or not, that will help motivate her to stay in shape. Because if she starts putting on a bunch of weight and not taking care of herself and all these attractive younger women are in essence hitting on her man, if she cares, she'll typically do something about it to make sure she remains fit and in shape if she doesn't, if she's content to to let herself go, eventually you're going to let her go. It's, you know, no dude wants to be fit and in shape and look good for the most part. There are some guys that like that. I had a friend of mine I went to high school with. The dude was a gymnast. The guy was shreddy. He was a handsome guy. All the girls love this dude, but he loved big, beautiful women. And he married a girl that was always overweight. Everybody loved her in high school, and she just continued to... To balloon up nicely, even after if they had kids, and he loves the shit out of her, and that's great. But for the average guy, especially most fit and in shape dudes, they want a fit and in shape girl. What if somebody has like health conditions, like a thyroid issue, or that's bullshit. Uh, you got to have a I calorie mean, deficit. You cannot be obese. There's women who suffer from like poly polycystic ovarian yeah. things there's a lot of health things that actually make women blow up yeah it's so easier said than unless, it's called a lack of self-control that's not true it absolutely is true okay a caloric deficit no but it's easier said than done you won't understand what it's like until you're in that person's I, shoes some hey, people i used need to weigh push. 190 i know what it's like to be overweight i had no neck when i was 29 you see my <laughs> pictures are on my website it was like this i was like what's up i'm Corey wayne you know, when I had a, I, I was almost a size 34 waist and I was like 190, I'm um, basically about five, five, nine. And my ideal weight is about 160, 165. And that's what I had always been, but I just ate normal. And as I got older and into my late twenties, cause everything changes, your metabolism changes. It's a pound here, a pound there. It's like, oh, I got to go to the store. Wow, these pants are a little tight. All right, let me go up a size. And, oh, I'm going to change my belt. And oh, that feels good. These look good on me. And uh, it happens over many years. It's not like it happens in a, in a couple of months. And it, it got to the point when I was 29 years old, I, I was taking a dump about once or twice a week. And when it came out, it was big. <laughs> it was hard. It was like petrified wood. I was like, <clears throat> You know, really trying to force the loaf out. You know, I would split my asshole. It would bleed. I'd have big oh hemorrhoids. God. They were like, you know, Damn big I knots agree. like my I'm thumb. It was painful to poop. I didn't Poor feel good. I got colds all the time. I got sick all the time. And I went to Hawaii with one of my best friends at the time. And I bought, I remember I bought some, um, some multivitamins. And I made the decision that I'm going to stop eating all fried food. I'm going to stop drinking sodas. And when I came back, I realized it was like, that was like 99% of what I was eating. And so when you cut out fried foods Soda. and sodas. You drop weight like this. I, I went from being 190 to 165 in about six months. I wasn't trying to lose weight. I just wanted to be healthier and feel better. And man, I started pooping every day, once or twice a day. It was like I didn't have hemorrhoid problems anymore. And let me tell you, that is unpleasant. Just, you know, you wake up every day, you're like, oh, I was eating whatever I wanted. It was gross. I looked gross. And, you know, I, I got my ass in shape. And so I know what it's like. I've been there. And it was just a lack of discipline. It was a, 
a lack of caring because I grew up eating whatever. If it's food, it's edible, you can eat it. But I didn't understand at the time. It was like all those the sugar and the carbs and the sodas and everything else just <clears throat> fat is toxin storage. And if your body is full of fat, it's because you're not getting the greens and the vitamins and the minerals to neutralize this stuff and safely remove it from your body. And so, oh, I have a thyroid condition. Like, I, I had a, I had two, this couple that we knew when we were when I was in real estate back in the day. This is going back over twenty years. Really cool guy. He, him and his wife were really fat. And his wife was like, oh, I have a thyroid. So whenever we would hang out, she'd be eating a salad with like nothing on it hardly. And I'm like, well, she eats pretty healthy. But at night, she's, you know, she's like Cookie Monster. Just blah, 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 blah. Weekends with nobody's on ball. But in public, she's presenting to everybody like, oh, I'm eating a salad. That does but nothing. Exactly. She's putting on a, on a show. And but when she was home and nobody was around other than her husband and her kids, it's like she was if you, she mean, was job of the hut. Eat all the salads you want if you're not working out. Like salads, I mean, if you're overweight, like significantly overweight, just eating salads, first of all, you're deplenishing your body of the nutrients it needs by just eating the salad. And it's not helping you lose weight. So let's just get that across in the diet coke, that doesn't work either. Aspartame is worse than the yeah, sugar exactly. itself. Yeah, exactly. So when you're drinking that Diet Coke, that's worse for you. It just you cut need, out the, you need the to soda. Cut out the so- the sugars, and you need to eat regularly, but smaller smaller, smaller portions. portions. And more frequently to start boosting your metabolism, you should have at least six meals yeah. a day and, like, the size of your fist. Learn your food pyramid, like, people. Yeah. Just eat steak and eggs. Yeah, it's protein and like rice or potatoes for carbs. And maybe one day a week you drink, you eat your Kit Kat bar or your bag of M&Ms or whatever. One cheat day a week. I wouldn't do that. One day a week. Until you reach your like goal. Well, because what happens then is you're denying yourself. And then what what anybody that's overweight will tell you, because I got a a lot of friends that are overweight, is that they'll be good. And then they're like, they they don't eat anything, and then they, like, start binging. And then they just don't exercise self-control, and then what ends up happening, they end up gaining more weight in the long run. So that's why 80% of the time you want to try to be healthy, and 20% of the time you screw around. And so over, a th- you know, a, a month that's, like, 30 days, that gives you five, six cheat days a month. And the rest of the time, you should be disciplined. You should be doing cardio, and you should be doing – weight training and most of what you eat should be proteins and things like rice or potatoes nothing fried no french fries no potato chips no donuts none of that crap that people you know lots of pasta you don't eat that stuff if you eat lean and you get the greens in your body like the green juice Corey's green juice or the you know that i wrote about in mastering yourself and the smoothies and the healthy nuts the weight, just like you know, when I was 190, it's I just cut out fried foods. I cut out pork. I cut out red meat at the time, and I very rarely even eat red meat now. Occasionally, when I'm at a, a place that's got really good steaks, like a fillet, I might get a steak. But most I don't like steaks just because it's like chewing rope. And but most of the time, chicken, fish, turkey, or the 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 proteins that I eat, and you know, like I said, when, when I cut out, just changed my diet because it was lots of sugar and lots of carbs in my diet. It's like the weight just, it slowly came off over many months. And I just, like, I remember my pants were like, wow, these are loose. And I would buy a new set of pants. And then a few months later, it was like, I got to, you know, I either got to take them in or, or get new pants. I had to buy all new, because even my shirts, my just, I had girth everywhere. My, I was just thicker. I was, I had an extra 30 pounds almost on me <laughs> and not the good kind of girth. <laughs> <laughs> he said girth. It was the wrong girth. <laughs> he said girth. So which one do you think is harder, to lose weight or gain weight? Depends. What's harder? It truly depends on each person. Well, metabolism. you should really look at it as losing weight. You're just making the choice to be healthy. Because if you choose to eat the right kinds of foods and healthy foods – your your body will be able to eliminate the fat that's stored throughout your body because not only does it put it in your fat rolls and on your 
you know, in your tissues everywhere, but the fat's on your heart, it's on your internal organs, it's spread everywhere throughout your body, and it will kill you eventually. It will shorten your life decades before you should have died. And the sad thing is, when you look at 74% of Americans are overweight and obese, it's like most people don't give a damn. They just don't care. It's sad, but it is what it is.